Hello and welcome to the United Community Channel. This is your morning news for Manchester United on January the 22nd, Monday morning. Plenty to talk about. United have got a new CEO. Let's get into it. So, as we know, over the weekend, Manchester United have made the capture of Manchester City CEO and he's moving across the city to the red side. Uh, and it's a brilliant capture by Manchester United, it really is. Uh, some reports, however, have been coming out over the last few days suggesting, is he going to be implicated in the 115 charges that you know are coming up against Manchester City? Now, the, the Times uh, have kind of put that to bed and they've said near, uh, newly appointed Manchester United CEO Omar Barada uh, did not play any role in the sponsorship and salary deals that have led to Manchester City being charged with 115 alleged rule breaches by the Premier League. Uh, so this guy... I mean, the Times is is basically rock solid when it comes to information like this. So uh, I think it's good the fact that we can kind of rest easy a little bit. But in terms of an, actu an actual appointment, uh, this is top notch. It really is. We we've seen, you know, and we've, we've spoken about over the last, I suppose, 12 months or so since the kind of the offer to, to, for new... I suppose, owners to come into Manchester United has been there that United need the best in class. Uh, and this guy does represent the best in class in terms of having a CEO. Um, obviously, he's overseen, you know, the, the great success that Manchester City have done. And he's also uh, had brilliant, brilliant success at uh, Barcelona as well through the period that Pep Guardiola was there and how successful they were being with acquiring players and stuff. So this guy absolutely knows what he's doing. And I think it's a real, real good appointment by Manchester United. However, it shouldn't stop there. You know, we need to get a sporting director in, you know, technical directors, so on and so forth. Uh, it, it does look like Innie Austin or Jim Radcliffe do know what they want uh, and they know the kind of people they want to put in place. Does that mean they've already made up their mind maybe on Eric Ten Hag at the end of the season? They might look to maybe change something there. That remains to be seen. Uh, but as of now, uh, you know, all the right sound bites are coming out around Manchester United. They're making the right moves. They're speaking with fans. You know, they're appointing the right people so far. Uh, and long may it continue because Manchester United certainly do need uh, as big an overhaul as possible uh, to try and turn things around at the club. Now, let's talk about Manchester United being linked with another Crystal Palace player. And as we know, I, I mean, it does look like Manchester United are going to have some dealings with Crystal Palace in the summer. Uh, obviously, we know that the links are there uh, between United and Elise uh, and you know, obviously, United are a number of clubs that are looking at him as a potential new signing in the summer. We heard reports as well that Manchester United were potentially looking to use Aaron Mambasaka uh, as a kind of a, um, you know, a bargaining chip when it comes to getting the Elise deal done, and maybe he will go in the opposite direction. But reports coming out over the weekend have suggested that Manchester United are also interested in Eze, uh, and they are willing to pay the sixty million pound valuation uh, that. Crystal Palace are looking for him. Again, another fantastic player. Uh, it is an area of concern for Manchester United, the wide areas. I think it is an area that we do need to strengthen. I think Eze is a fantastic footballer. 60 million remains to be seen whether that would be good value for money. Um, but I think it is something that United need to look at in, in, in terms of just strengthening the depth uh, of that, uh, of the wings, you know, the, the right and left hand side. You know, we know Marcus Rashford is inconsistent on that left. Uh, Garnacho has moved over onto the right hand side and seemed to have made that spot his own, uh, with obviously the 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 poor form that uh, Anthony has shown since he arrived at Manchester United. Uh, we've seen Palestri going on loan. Um, you know, Ahmad is only coming back from injury. So I think it is an area that we could potentially look to improve uh, in the summer, whether it be one or two signings. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what the budget is going to be like in the summer transfer window. We know we're not going to be doing much business uh, in the January window, maybe just loans more than anything else. But... Uh, you know, if we're looking at a £60 million Eze, we also probably need another... Well, we definitely do need another striker. We needed one, maybe two centre-backs, another centre midfielder. There is going to need to be a, a, a pretty sizable chunk of investment put into Manchester United. Does that come from Jim Radcliffe? I don't know how that's going to work. It's something we'll figure out as the days and weeks go on. Um, but Man United are being linked with the right players, I think. And Eze is another one of these players. You know, young, hungry, looking to make a name for himself. is doing really well at Crystal Palace uh, and has all the attributes and talent to go on and play at a top club like Manchester United. Uh, so let's see what happens. 60 million, 
I think it would be a bit of a stretch to pay that for him. Again, I think a lot of it will come down to, you know, outgoings in the summer as well and how we can build up that transfer kitty because obviously the FFP is coming into play an awful lot lately. Um, so, yeah, let's see what happens. But it's a thumbs up for me for Eze. Now, let's talk about defenders. And we've spoken about this guy in particular uh, quite a bit over the last maybe seven days or so. Uh, and it's Matthias De Ligt of Bayern Munich. Uh, initial reports come out last week that Manchester United would be open to potentially signing him from Bayern Munich. Um, he has had a lack of game time, doesn't seem to be too happy with it. And reports over the weekend have suggested that he will be considering his future at the end of the season with Bayern Munich. Uh, and, you know, United are poised and ready to, ready to go into the market for him. Uh, I think, was it 60 million? Bayern Munich paid for him only, I think, 18 months ago. Uh, you know, again, there has been some... I suppose valid concerns raised uh, about Matthias Delict. Obviously, uh, how good he was at, at Ajax is, is there to be seen. Uh, but he goes to Juventus and it doesn't work out. And now he's at Bayern Munich and it doesn't work out either. I do think he has, you know, all the talent in the world. But there must be a reason why he's been maybe sidelined, uh, you know, and it's not working out in two of the top clubs in Europe as well. Uh, but it... Look, I mean, it's it's no secret that Manchester United are going to be in the market for a defender in the summer, central defender. Uh, and I think this guy does fit the bill. I think he ticks all the boxes. Uh, are there, you know, other players out there that I would be happy with as well? Of course there is. Uh, but if it means Matthias De Ligt is the one that Eric Ten Hag wants and, or Jim Radcliffe wants or whoever it may be, uh, then I'm happy with this signing. He's 24 years of age. I mean, he's not even in his prime yet. Uh, so, you know, we know the attributes that he has... Uh, the fact that he's looking to maybe leave Barcelona at the, or sorry, Bayern Munich at the end of the year, depends on, you know, how much of a how much of a price tag he's going to have on his shoulders. You know, if they paid 50, 60 million for him, I think we should probably be getting him for less than that. You know, if we we're if we we're talking about 40 to 50 million for Matthias De Ligt, I think that's a really really good deal. Uh, it remains to be seen how much he will cost, but I think if they sign him for, you know. 60 million 18 months ago and it hasn't worked out I don't see why his price would increase you know so uh, I think it'll all come down to the valuation of the player and you know you do need to be smart in the summer as well we, do, we can't be going out and throwing silly money around you know uh, on one or two players you know use the money smartly and get in four or five players and I think that's the way we need to do it um, but I want to move it on as well guys and talk a little bit before we finish up uh, about the striker situation uh, at Manchester United uh, and obviously uh, Chupa Moting, again of Bayern Munich, has been the one that's been linked with Manchester United more than anything else uh, over the uh, January transfer window. Uh, he is open to a move to Manchester United. Now, Bayern Munich do want to hold on to him. They do want him to stay. Um, but he is open to a move to Manchester United. As of now, there hasn't been an official approach by United. Again, we've seen United in the past doing uh, late deals in the summer, or sorry, in January, uh, you know, the final weeks. I mean, I think we signed two players on, on deadline day. Was it last year, I think, as well? So, look, I th United need to get in the striker in this January transfer window. On loan, uh, it does look like it's going to be, uh, but, you know, this guy, you know, he's 34 years of age. He's got a lot of experience. Is that the counterbalance that you need to bring in alongside the likes of, uh, you know, Rasmus Hyland that's already there? I think regardless of what type of player we bring in, it's important that we just bring in a striker to take some of the pressure off of um, Rasmus Hyland because, you know... He's the only. He's twenty years of age and he's leading the line for Manchester United. Anthony Martial looks, you know, out of favour and he's going to move on in the summer, uh, you know, at the latest. Uh, so bringing in a striker is vitally important for Manchester United in in, in this January transfer window. Chupamoting, you know, could potentially be that one. Now again, there has been reports suggesting that Manchester United are still keeping tabs on Ivan Tony. Uh, again, we do know this is not going to be a summer or sorry a January uh, deal. It's going to be a summer deal. Uh, but United are uh, one of a host of clubs that are looking at potentially signing the player Arsenal we know the links there I think Chelsea have been looking at him as well they're desperate for a striker um, and I, I did read some reports as well that Liverpool are even keeping tabs on him potentially looking to cash in uh, on Darwin Nunez if you know he continues to uh, have the season he's having I suppose um, but yeah I mean Ivan Tony would be a brilliant brilliant signing for United how much are we going to get for him? I mean, we did see he scored on his debut. Well, his debut, his return uh, against Forest over the weekend. If he continues to score goals, you will be looking at 
anywhere between 80 and 100 million for him. And we do know that strikers, you know, good quality strikers are at a premium at the moment. Uh, so it remains to be seen how uh, we get on with that one. Um, but it does look like a big overhaul uh, over the next six to 12 months at Manchester United in terms of signings, in terms of backroom staff. Hopefully not in terms of manager. I hope Eric Ten Hag gets given the time, um, you know, to, you know, to try and flourish under this new, you know, era at Manchester United and the structures that are being put in place. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Please do smash a like on the video as well. Hit subscribe if you're new. We'll be back tonight at eight o'clock for our transfer talk show. So make sure you're joining us for that as well. Until then, have a good day.